All right, long hot day. The temperature's in the 90s, but it was a good productive day. We did find two sheds in the, the big and beastie plot. This is a deer we had some pictures of, but young deer with a lot of potential. There's a pretty solid buck. I have lots of pictures of him. I think he's a four-year-old. I don't know 100% sure, but I, I kind of think he's the deer that uh, we found the shed to when we were planting that big and beastie plot right there. Um, and he, I mean, he looks like a four-year-old probably. But Mike and I put these cameras out uh, probably nine or 10 days ago now. And so this is the first card pull on our farm this year. I have to go back and look and see how many we actually recognize, but one for sure we do recognize. We just got a picture of them over here by the pond. And uh, it wasn't a deer I expected to make a good jump, but from just flipping through the pictures really quick, it looks like he did make a good jump. It's a deer I encountered a couple of times last year. I thought he was four or five last year, wasn't really sure. Probably more likely four. Everything off the peninsula without having to go back there. Come on, side for me. Saturday, October 12th, and Jake and I are tucked in for our afternoon sit. We're on Jared and I's farm, and this is the uh, this the spot. If you guys remember from two years ago, where Jared and I, on our first sit on the farm, had an encounter with the buck we call Marino. The other deer I'm looking for is Todd Gurley. He's a deer we've had just like Marino three years of history with, and uh, both of them are really nice looking deer this year, and the top two bucks on the hit list. Um, so we're gonna just get quiet and enjoy the sit. Well, it's Wednesday, October 16th. We're down on Jared and I's farm. We're set up on this little tiny turnip plot. Um, we've got a camera right here on the corner on this scrape that we made. And uh, we're getting both Todd Gurley and this uh, big typical buck we call Andrew Luck. We haven't had Andrew Luck on camera for a while. Um, we think he's living across the road, but the corn's been coming out across the road. They're combining it, so I think that there's a chance he's going to move back in here or at least start visiting this area. And Todd Gurley is all over the farm. He's been here for three years, and uh, he's been on this camera. I haven't had him daylight on this camera, but he's been really close to daylight. And uh, he's been on other cameras in daylight not that far away. This coming week, November 4th through the 10th, should be one of the best of the season. Over the past 12 years, our pro staff has shot more good bucks during this week than any other. However, 2019 has been unique. It could go down as the first year in my memory when October was nearly as good as November. And who knows, maybe even better. We took advantage of the many crisp, cool days. I shot the buck we showed last week on the 23rd. Mike Reed followed that just three days later with another good one. Hunting in eastern Iowa on the farm he and Jared Mills owned, Mike was surprised when one of their top targets made an appearance. It's the afternoon of Saturday, October 26th. It's about four o'clock and Jake and I are uh, set up for the hunt. We're on Jared and I's farm still. We've moved out to the wetland area and we have this turnip plot tucked up against the corner of the timber. And uh, it did really well this year. We've got this scrape tree right out in front of us. We've had pictures of Todd Gurley here in daylight. And we've also had this uh, buck we call Bob that Jake or Grant is gonna shoot if he comes in. Marino has been 
about a hundred yards away in the afternoon. I think it was the 14th or 17th. So he's also moving around in this area. He came out at 6.30 one evening out of the, the timber here. Those are our two primary targets. There's typically a lot of does in this plot. And so as we approach the end or the beginning of the rut, this pre-rut time phase, I expect the bucks to be you know, harassing the does. So I'm hoping where the does are, the bucks are gonna be. The uh, wind is northeast, which is kind of blowing back into the timber. It's supposed to be switching more north, northwest as the night progresses. The neighbor is uh, combining all of his beans right here. You can hear the combine going. And I think he'll be combining right up till dark, but he finished getting his corn out a few days ago and they're gonna get all the beans out here pretty soon. So I imagine all the deer are gonna be you know, heading out there to eat. Hopefully they'll hold up here in stage for a minute. See if a big buck comes out behind him. Come walk around in here for a while. Well, we're down to our last hour here. It's been drizzling a little bit on and off. The wind is uh, straightening up like we wanted to, blowing more northerly. We had two does come out of the willows into uh, our bean plot there about 4.30 and we haven't seen any other deer. I think they just shut the combine off. So it's cooling down nicely and hopefully the deer activity picks up here pretty soon. Not paying attention. That was a cool encounter. That 10 point is on just about every camera. And I think it's the third time we see him. I think Jared might've gotten some footage of him when he was out of this tree a couple days ago. But uh, he walked right at the base of the tree. And I think our wind kind of went over him and our ground set must not have been too bad because he barely hesitated. And he's just heading out to those uh, beans they're cutting. And then we had a little one-year-old walk up from downwind, which they don't normally come from back there, but of course, you know, they come from everywhere. This whole area is a bedding area, but that 10 point's got a very distinctive black, really black eyes. The rings around his eyes are black. And very, very distinctive look. I was a little on the fence whether he was three or four, but after seeing him in person, I think he's a four-year-old. Nice looking deer. Hopefully the parade continues.
hard for me to tell. I'm pretty sure that's the curve. <laughs> he had the curve in his beam. I'm second guessing myself a little bit, but I'm pretty sure that was the big old deer anyway. That was awesome. So, uh, we're sitting here in the tree and I was just telling Jake that I could hear some thrashing down the corner at the edge of the plot. Sounds like a buck raking a tree and then we could hear him walking. And it's crazy that none of these deer are coming in the food plot. They're all walking in the timber. And he was coming right downwind of us. I was able to stop him at 27 yards. And uh, looked like I pummeled him. It looked like I made a great shot. It sounded like he went down over here. So exciting. <laughs> well, we just got back to the tree, um, ran back to the truck, I had my computer, so we looked at the footage, shot looks great. It's definitely Tiger early. I, uh, I questioned it at first when I first got him in the binos. Um, my brain said Todd Gurley because he's got those long beams that kind of curl. But um, I got those laser force Nikon binos and when I, I accidentally hit the rangefinder button so the red light lit up and I couldn't see him anymore. And we had about three seconds before he was gonna get downwind. So uh, anyway, kind of made it funny and interesting. But uh, the shot looks great. We think we heard him crash. And um, like I said, we just got back to the tree so we're gonna take a look at the arrow and, and track him up. Hit his offside shoulder or leg bone. And he wheeled around and about five yards into it, he broke it off. There's good blood right here. And a nice spray. It goes, it goes all in there. Here. He starts to wheel. That's him right there. There he is, guys. <laughs> we did hear him crash. Let's go take a look. Dang, what a monster. Well, this is Todd Gurley. What a beast of a buck. The mass is unbelievable. I never did appreciate it in the trail camera pictures. He's been on the farm since we bought it. Last year, he was a really nice looking four-year-old. Uh, Jared had a few encounters with him. And then this year, he made a really nice jump, threw out a bunch of character points, and packed on some mass. Got great long beams. And he was uh, our target buck this year. One of the couple target bucks we have on this farm. So you hear us talk about on Midwest Whitetail, these late October cold fronts. And today wasn't exactly a cold front per se, but it was a weather front moving through, drizzling, the pressure was dropping. Um, this October, this, this pre-rut has been some of the best weather I can remember over the last 10 years. A lot of our uh, team members have been having really great hunts, good encounters with mature deer. We've been seeing lots of four-year-olds and it's just really fun to be in the woods this time of year as the, um, you know, the rut's trying to kick off and all these bucks are excited and this weather's really helping us out um, seeing them in daylight. Hopefully this, this pattern continues. The next week looks awesome and we've still got a couple more targets and uh, I've got another tag in my pocket. So thanks for watching Midwest Whitetail. I spent this past week taking a trip down memory lane as I headed up to Northeast Iowa to hunt one of the farms I grew up hunting. I'm definitely biased, but this is one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen in the state of Iowa. Hunting became secondary to just being there again, to seeing the awesome country and visiting family. Fourth generation on both sides of my family from that county, I'm related to just about everyone if you go back far enough. And it is not like the hunting was poor. It always takes time to figure out a property, and after more than 30 years since my last time on the farm, I didn't have much to go on. We struggled a bit, but we did almost put things together on the last morning. I don't think we've seen him before. I don't think so. Another buck coming down the trail, way up on top. So we've got four bucks. I think that's a different buck again, isn't it? I think so. That's a good buck. It's not our shooter, is it? I don't know. He's up on the path now. Here she goes. Yep, that's our buck. Oh, that's the deer you saw? Yeah. 
Good morning, morning to them. That's the same buck that we saw two mornings ago when we were leaving this stand and heading back to camp. That's a deer that, if he gives us a shot, would be pretty tough to pass up here uh, on this trip. That was round three with that buck. Yeah. And I made up my mind when he was 20 yards away, head on, that I was gonna shoot the deer, but not, I mean, not a head on shot, but when he was coming in like that, I mean, he looked really good. He looks, he looked better at close range than what he did when he was chasing, chasing that doe through the brush earlier, or even when he was down there making that scrape. Uh, he's a nice buck. He was just, you know, one of those deals where he was coming straight at me. I didn't want to draw when he was coming straight at me. And then he, he kind of saw us up here. And then there was no way I was going to draw. I admit that I wasn't aggressive enough on that encounter. I needed to be at full draw when the buck was coming in so that I could get the shot when he turned. But a part of me didn't really want to tag out either. Then find myself pacing my office floor for the next month. The buck got away. Hopefully the landowner can tag him. So now I am back hunting my farm in southern Iowa, focusing on three bucks that I will be pursuing for the rest of the month. One of them an old timer with a blind eye and a messed up rack. I really like that deer. I will also be keeping watch for another surprise along the way. It is now time to catch up with the rest of our team. Owen Riegler has been hunting two bucks, one that he calls Picket Fence because of its awesome row of tines, and another giant he calls Digits, a dinosaur that Owen believes is eight years old. Both are great bucks, but I really want to see Owen tag digits. Bucks that old don't come along very often. Unfortunately, despite great conditions that included two snowstorms and a lot of stand time, Owen did not see either buck during the past week. Josh Sparks continues to hunt public land all across the southern half of the state, bouncing around from spot to spot to stay ahead of the hunting pressure that increases by the day. The most promising spot remains the new piece where Josh and cameraman Max Mongrello encountered big shooters twice during the third week of October. Hunting that area this past week, the two bow hunters saw only young bucks. Now with tag in hand, Max passed up a solid 10 pointer. Not wanting his season to end too quickly, he is hoping for something a bit older. Drake Lamb has been filming me and producing all of my video blogs that you see on the Midwest Whitetail website. There are times, however, when Drake gets to hunt. To make the most of his time, he has been focusing on three permission farms close to his home. This past week, he found a new buck that grabbed his attention. As we have documented, Jared Mills has been hunting a giant mystery buck. But knowing that you can overpressure a small property, Jared has backed off for now. Instead, he is spending time hunting other farms, most specifically the one that he and Mike Reed own, the one where Mike tagged out recently. There are still several mature bucks showing up on their cameras, and that is where Jared plans to spend his time whenever he is not hunting the big deer. If you've been following Midwest Whitetail for long, you know how much we love youth hunts and getting the next generation involved in the sport. A number of our viewers are young, and this week we have something just for you. On the evening of October 27th, Ty Kehoe, younger brother to one of our pro staff members, Brooks Kehoe, had an awesome hunt and ended up tagging a great buck. It's a big buck. You ready? Yeah, I No, no, wait. Oh my gosh, Brooks! Oh, Brooks! You don't even understand! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh. We were just talking about how this is unbelievable. How we don't see anything. Like we're like, there's nothing out here. Like we can't believe it. And I'm like, I turn around, I'm like Brooks, big buck, and it walked. I'm not lying. Five yards from the tree, directly behind us. That happened in a matter of 
15 seconds I shot that deer. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> what just happened? What just happened? That's the big nine. That's the, that's, that's the first deer we've seen all night. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe this. <laughs> Did you get it on video? We just got back out here. We gave the buck about three hours to sit or so, so the shot was, the buck was a little quarter in the way, so we think the shot was pretty good, we think, so it went right through the the lungs and hit the back shoulder because we couldn't, we went out and looked to see if we could find the air and we didn't find anything, so we're gonna be quiet here and we're gonna Go see if we can get on blood and see if we find him. There he is. There he is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wait, go get him, Ty. <laughs> Little stiff. Did it yeah. accidentally? Yeah, Ty. <laughs> Under the pressure, Ty performed like a veteran. It is great to see young people carrying on the deer hunting tradition in a way that makes us all proud. Congratulations, Ty. What a week we had, and by the looks of the forecast, these next few days should be even better. The focus turns to the simple act of just being there when the first wave of does come into estrus. Every year that event falls early in November and sets the woods on fire. I can't wait to hear the loud crunching leaves as bucks cruise the timber, competing for that first place trophy. These stories and more will continue to unfold right here every week. We appreciate you joining us on this journey. We will see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail. And remember to always dream big.